everybody. My name is uh, Stephen Chia. I'm very happy to be here in Ukraine. It's my first time in uh, Kiev. I think it's a beautiful city. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, when you're implementing blockchain solutions, what are some of the features you need to think about uh, when you're implementing your project on blockchain. So um, let's start. Well, I would not assume everyone know about blockchain, so I always start with two slides, very basic, okay? Essentially today, if you were to send emails or even to send a file, you know that when you hit send, your email or your file gets transferred from one computer to an another, right? But today also, if you send a transaction, and I don't mean a financial transaction, it can even be non-financial in nature, when you send it, invariably you need a middle man. That middle man could be a bank, a payment gateway, or even a central authority, right? So blockchain actually, at its core, is a transaction network. It helps you process your transaction, and again, not necessarily a financial one, okay? And I'm sure you have probably seen this before, what we have currently in most systems today is centralized database where all your information, your transactions is stored in a centralized manner. And of course, blockchain changed that. Essentially, the reason why they call it distributed ledger technology is because they take what is stored in a centralized manner and distribute it across different nodes on a blockchain network. With that, you saw that blockchain technology makes it scalable, makes it tamper-proof because of the nature of the architecture. And there's another attribute, because a lot of the blockchain is based on the original fundamental idea of Bitcoin blockchain. So it's open source, therefore sometimes it's also a lower cost to run. The other thing that makes blockchain very unique is because of its nature of immutability. Now immutability is essentially when it's written, it cannot be changed, right? So these are the things that blockchain does really well, okay? But if you look at today's companies or projects that are powered by conventional system, systems, right? They're trying to move to blockchain. You know that blockchain actually needs to go beyond cryptocurrency, right? That means it needs to solve uh, it from the transactional point of view, right? Second is, of course, most blockchains need you to probably have a blockchain degree or probably learn a language. So for enterprise, they don't have time to do that. For companies or for organizations which have current legacy systems, they also need transaction speed or processing speed, right? And of course, they need to be able to have a demand for it to be simple. That means the interface, how you talk to the blockchain, has to be simple. Of course, most real-world working models needs to be able to be put on a blockchain. So if your blockchain is purely to move one digital currency or to move one digital asset from one wallet to another, it won't work as well. Of course, in business today, you always need the ability to have a system that's flexible of course, low cost, and able to be repeated, replicated models, okay? So, basically for NEM, we've always started as a blockchain technology solution first. It was built for enterprise grade, not just to move a digital currency. In fact, if you go to our NEM uh, blockchain website, NEM.io, you would see that we are just beyond a cryptocurrency, all right? So second, of course, one of the fundamental core of what NEM blockchain is all about is that it's API driven. So for those of you who are in, uh, not familiar with this, API is actually the language of how computer programs talk to each other. This API approach helps with corporate or even small projects because it allows you to have the ability to have your program be powered by blockchain, but you don't have to learn the language of blockchain. You just need to know how the API uh, talks 
to your program. Think of it as, for example, you want to build a bus or a truck. We are the engine that powers your application, all right? So let's switch gears a little bit. A lot of talk, in, especially in corporate and enterprise solutions, is about transaction speeds. And the number one complaint that everyone has about blockchain is, because you have so many computers working in a blockchain node, transaction speed is a problem, right? So let's break it down. Let's say, for example, uh, you have a blockchain network that can process 200 transactions per second, right? If you do the math, you take it, multiply by 60 uh, seconds for a minute, and then 60 minutes for an hour, at the end of the day, you will find that you would have probably 518 million transactions per second, correct? Now, this is actually version one of the NEM blockchain, right? We have a version two, which we actually codename Catapult, all right? Catapult can do 4,000 transactions per second. So if you do the math again, that's a very big number, all right? So you always need to ask, even at 200 transactions per second, does your program or does your enterprise need that kind of firepower? Does it need that kind of processing speed? Just to give you a scale of comparison, MasterCard Visa roughly is around 25,000 per second, 25,000 transactions per second, right? So again, I always ask people who are trying to develop their software or their application on the blockchain, do you need that kind of firepower. So when people mention, oh, you know, you have only 200 transactions per second, it's not enough for me, right? So the fundamental question is you ask yourself, does your program, does your application require the kind of transactions speed, right? Let's, this is how um, one aspect of it. The second aspect is because on the blockchain, when you push transactions or you pull transactions on the blockchain, all right, that takes time, all right? We solve it in a very different way, and this is actually one of the core features of our version two of the NEM blockchain, the Catapult. We in invented something called the aggregated transactions, meaning when you have a transaction, let's say, for example, a typical one in the, in the early version, is I have to, let's say the buyer is buying from a seller. I need to do two transactions. That means I need to do a, a exchange, a transaction, and then I need to do the final transaction with the seller, right? But in an aggregated transaction, it's one shot, all this happens all at once. Now this actually does two things. One is it actually save a lot of processing time because you're doing it one shot. Second is, it reduces the amount of faults, if any, right? So here's an example of a, let's say, a automatic transaction where the middle person, I think in the case of this, is an app that says that I'm gonna select, I'm, I'm gonna uh, deduct a fee if you make the transaction between Bob and Alice. So this is a very interesting solution to how to solve uh, enterprise problem using aggregated transactions, okay? And this is actually uh, reduces a lot of time taken. The other thing that we do to make it enterprise grade, blockchain. Essentially, we know that signatures, multi-signature wallet is now becoming increasingly more important, especially for enterprise or organization use. That means just like you have a joint account where two or three people sign off before you can release the payment. It's very common in any organization or company, right? But we, even, we have a multi-signature wallet, but we took it one more level. That means we created a multi-level, multi-signature wallet in Catapult. What that means is you can actually have very, very creative solutions that allows multiple parties and multiple stakeholders to sign off a transaction all in one shot. Because this actually helps you to create even very, very complex systems like a supply chain, right? Where not one, but two or even three stakeholders 
have to sign off before a supply chain transaction happens. Now, this actually helps it to make the blockchain, the NEM blockchain, more robust for enterprise or big, large organizations use, right? So this is, I don't know whether the video comes out. Well, maybe it does, okay. So what we did was how we were able to do that is essentially in the latest version of NEM blockchain, we created four layers of it. Of course, you have the, the core, which is the NEM blockchain, and then you have the MongoDB, which is actually a database, and then with the API server. This is actually the development of Catapult in the past 18 months. This is a collapse video, it took 120 seconds of it. That's how long it took to, for us to build it. So today, if you are a developer, whether in organization or if you are a, a startup company developing on blockchain, you can actually sign up to be a developer uh, to preview this uh, developer's uh, version of Catapult. Okay, so I encourage you to take a look at it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. So this, uh, I think, 18 months worth of work collapsed in 120 seconds, right? So, of course, we created something called uh, another layer. The final layer is actually any apps that you create, a name apps and a like client, all right? So, yeah, it's actually our three developers, core developers in action, right? And actually, one of them is actually called Jaguar. So he has a little Jaguar there, right? <laughs> okay, so this is essentially, uh, um, you, I think we have it on our NEM website, but basically this is the entire ecosystem of what is possible, right? This is, is what are some of the solutions that are out there that's powered by NEM blockchain today, right? And there are many, many more. So here's a few examples of it because I'm from Malaysia and I'm from Asia, so I'll show some Asian examples. Uh, this project is called uh, Loyal Coin. It's actually a loyalty program on the blockchain. And basically they created a system where a loyalty program can exist on the blockchain and individual uh, of their customers can transfer that uh, loyal token or loyal point from one to another. Okay, so uh, they were doing for Starbucks and uh, Grab is like Uber here and Petron is their um, petrol station, right? Here's another one. Um, Pundi is a Indonesian project. They developed a next generation point of sale terminal. Uh, and basically this terminal can read and write, uh, read uh, credit cards, debit cards, plus it can also do things like bank cards, and digital currencies of any sort. So this is powered by NEM blockchain because they have a QR code reader on the side of the terminal that can read a, a card that has a stored value of a digital currency, all right? So this uh, project is called Pundi X, and they already started to ship the terminals all over the uh, Asian region and even, I think, in Europe, all right? Here's another one. It's powered by um, NEM blockchain. Basically, Proxima X is the project. It's a decentralized storage. What happens is if you are enterprise, you want to put your transactions on the blockchain, chances are it will be on the NEM uh, blockchain. But where do you store your data? That means where do you store your invoices? Where do you store your, your customer data? So Proxima X is actually a system that can allow you to store those records on a decentralized, secure manner. So that's what Proxima X is all about. At the same time, they develop a layer above this storage where you can write uh, multiple uh, applications so that you can do, for example, video streaming. That means your video is stored in a decentralized storage, but the application can use that to stream it out. Right? You can even do things like a uh, a registry, like you can store the registry certificates on the blockchain, and at the same time, people can use your application to review those documents if they wish, right? So now you have a system for corporate or for enterprise where you would have the transactions on the NEM blockchain, then you have the storage or the customer data on the Proxima, Proxima X platform, right? So is it failing? 
I don't think so. So you, you just need to solve some of this. Now, the bottom three is up to you all, okay? If you need to have simplicity, you need to have working models, it's up to corporates and small companies or medium-sized companies to embrace and develop applications powered by blockchain, right? So the green parts, we leave it to you guys, right? So with this, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to share about NEM blockchain. We have a booth here on the other side, so come visit us, uh, get a cool t-shirt or candy from us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to, um, uh, to answer the questions that you have. Um, NEM actually is existing in f six regions around the world. We have a ground team here uh, headed by Anton. He's uh, our NEM uh, Ukraine team. So if you are developing on the blockchain and you need a blockchain or you need uh, a team to come and share more about what NEM can do for you, uh, feel free to say hi to us on the booth uh, next door on the other side. All right. With this, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.